Hello everyone, welcome to part 2 of our electoral guidelines episode. If you haven't listened to part 1, we encourage you to do so. We'll be discussing a few possible questions regarding our guidelines. In this episode, we're going to do a Q&A with Pastor Gilbert Foliente on some of the questions we have on elections, the church, and politics. I'm Ryan. I'm part of our creative team in Victory and Every Nation. And I'm Elle, a campus missionary from Every Nation campus. And this is Leading Together. Hello, Pastor Gilbert. Hey, everybody. Hey, Elle. Hey, Ryan. This Hello. is going to be an exciting podcast today. It's going to be juicy. Yeah. <laughs> I got my coffee. <laughs> Are you ready? Let's go. Let's do it. I did just listen to it right before we started just to refresh again. And um, Pastor Gilbert, you, you started the episode defining our guidelines and our no endorsement policy. But we didn't really get to the no endorsement policy part. Would you be able to define the difference of that for us? Yes. Uh, thank you, Ryan. In that episode, when we were doing the theology together, I tried to uh, differentiate guideline with, and policy with an analogy about driving, where I said uh, a policy is when you're driving, you've got a limit, a speed limit of 100 kilometers per hour, and it is very precise and it's very specific of what you should not do. You should not drive with a speed limit of over 100. But a guideline is more a general framework of behavior. It doesn't tell you at a certain point whether you're out of line or not. It gives a general framework of behavior that should help you. And I said, in that analogy, it's like saying drive carefully. So for us, when we talk about guidelines, it is post carefully or or whatever you want to do in your social media, be careful with that. But the policy is there are certain things that we will not allow you to do. And as I've said in that podcast, the social media guidelines are for staff, pastors, campus missionaries, and even for our key uh for our leaders here in Victory and Every Nation Philippines. But the policy is only specifically for our pastors and our campus directors. Pastor Gilbert, can you quickly give us a summary of that policy? Even when we have not written it yet in 1984, this has always been the principle. It's a no endorsement policy when it comes to elections for pastors and campus directors. We will not endorse any candidate uh, on uh, our church platform, meaning any church uh, social media account, Never on stage, never on the pulpit, never on a church event, whether it's a small group or any kind of event, and any church official logo. So that's what the policy is about. The policy is no endorsement policy for any political candidate running for office uh, during church events, uh, using church platforms, and using church logos. I think we've seen on social media things that pastors would post and maybe even including yourself. Photos of- Huh, me? (laughs) Huh? Never. (laughs) Never. This is uh, asking for a friend. Yeah, (laughs) But photos of uh, maybe pastors with some politicians, pictures, um, are these considered endorsements or are they like the opinion of the church? Are we standing with these people? That's a great question. The main thing that we do as a church, especially as pastors, is uh, to preach the gospel and bring it to everybody. And that means we bring the gospel to students, to housewives, to businessmen, to doctors, and even to politicians. The whole goal is discipleship. As you know, victory, honor God, make disciples. We want to disciple people. We want to bring the gospel to them. And it doesn't matter what their lot in life is or what their vocation is. And so I would like to think, of course, we're really big enough and even though I'm the president of every nation, Philippines, and Victory, I cannot probably speak for all our pastors and all our staff. That's the reason why we have a policy. But I want to trust that the reason why our pastors are doing that, certainly I know if I post, <laughs> I'm not saying I'm posting, <laughs> if I do post, it's because we're discipling that politician. In the same way that I would post when I'm discipling a student, 
and I post when I'm discipling a businessman or a doctor. Right. When it is a discipleship setting and we're speaking to them about the Word of God and praying and all that, then that's okay to post. That's why uh, that's a great question because, you know, social media is so tricky, right? Yeah. Any post there can be interpreted by anyone. And that's why the guidelines are there to serve, to give wisdom even to pastors like me and our pastors to know when that might be misinterpreted or when that would be safe to post if that's not what you intend to mean uh, on that post. That is very uh, <laughs> uh, hard to distinguish. So what does what does endorsement actually mean? Is it posting about someone? Mm. Even if you're discipling that right. person, it, it really feels like you're... It en- looks like an endorsement. An, it looks like an endorsement, especially during election season. Right. Is that limited to election season? or? Yeah, that, that's a good question. For me, as a pastor and trying to exercise wisdom, again, I'm not perfect in this <laughs> I, I might from time to time make mistakes and and that's fine for everyone and that's why if you're listening to this podcast uh this is a time to make allowances for each other if you're a christian if you're part of victory every nation philippines the bible says make allowances for each other because nobody's gonna get this perfect in a very complex uh situation like this yeah. <laughs> where you're trying to disciple and trying to say i'm not endorsing you mm-hmm. i mean that's hard that's a hard line to tiptoe but uh in my mind if i've been discipling this politician for a long period of time and i've been posting about our meeting of prayer and bible study and fellowship even when there's no election so when i post it in nagkataon it's election season then for me it's safe to say well i'm not posting this because it's election season but if i only post about this politician Mm -hmm. even if i say it's bible study because we can right we can cover that with bible study and uh, if i only post during election seasons even if i don't specifically say vote for this candidate then for me that would be stupid on my part. <laughs> that would be a lack of wisdom on my part, even if I'm not trying to endorse because that will certainly be interpreted as endorsement. Okay, so I think it's safe to say that when we see those on social media, uh, those are not intentionally endorsing the politicians. Yes, I would like to believe <laughs> that all our pastors are not doing that Of course, we have so many pastors with such a big ministry and a big movement. I'm sure there'll be some who might have this and that. But that's the reason why we're doing a policy for our pastors and saying, you cannot do that. I think as a leader listening to this conversation, it can speak for both um, as staff and as pastors and campus directors. We have a policy. As a church um, and leaders, we have this guideline. And at the same time, as someone who uses social media, what I'm learning from this is that I should also learn to give allowance. Do not jump to conclusions that that's what they meant. Exactly. Uh, this person is siding with this person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But to, to also kind of give a benefit of the doubt. Maybe it's this. Or yeah. maybe to start a conversation with that person and ask, why did you post this? What does this mean? Yeah, excellent. And the sad reality of the social media were living in right now is that we, we all know there's an algorithm of social media. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. algorithm is to really polarize people because the more polarized people are the more social media profits and mm-hmm. benefits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so it takes so much effort for us as Christians. It takes so much effort for us as victory members <laughs> to really do that mm-hmm. because it is polarizing. One of the things I've said in that episode was... Uh, uh, speaking evil versus vilifying a f- person. Mm. And I'm not just talking about vilifying a, a, a bad politician in your mind. I'm talking about vilifying a person who th- who's got a different opinion as you, uh, who's got, uh, sometimes it might be diametrically opposed to your own opinion, and it's easy to vilify them because of social media. You know, a lot of times when we sit together like this and talk, very rarely do we vilify each other, right? Like right. Conversations like this, nagkakaintindihan tayo, like, oh, okay, that's what... 
But in social media, it's so easy to do that. So mm -hmm. again, L, I, I agree totally with what you said. Making allowances, uh, uh, making every effort to keep the unity of the spirit, not uh, rushing into judgment, because the Bible has to say a lot about those. Right. Yeah. I think because a lot of people right now are just so used to product placements. I mean, if like if you're an influencer and you just put a product there, you don't even have to tell people to buy it. Mm. Nah. You just have to say that you use it or you interact with this product. But we all know that influences them and people already know that's that's some sort of influencing yeah. others. But we're saying that's not that's not what we're trying to do. That's not what our pastors are trying to do when they do that. Yep. Yeah, and I think Pastor Gilbert, it goes back to what you were saying earlier about being led by the Spirit. Because like what you said, pastors, um, staff, leaders are also people who make mistakes. So when, let's say, they post something, it's not, I would say, we need to be led by the Spirit and to think that just because they posted it doesn't mean that's what's right <laughs> already and that's the absolute truth. Mm. But to also, as a Christian, exercise um my you know listening to to the spirit yeah. and to kind of discern um just because this was posted does it mean that um i'm also going to jump into that wagon and also um believe this opinion or vote for this person yeah exactly uh i mentioned that where the the thing that you have to ask yourself is are you led by the spirit or are you being led by the crowd all of us, and I've said that. I said, I think as pastors, we are the most vulnerable to this <laughs> because we interact mm -hmm. with the crowds and we want we want to listen to the crowd. And it's hard. And that's why we wanted to put this policy for pastors and we wanted to put these guidelines for leaders. Any You're listening to this. You might be leading uh, in the business sector. You might be leading as a student. But if you're a leader, you're... Your, one of your primary responsibilities is to listen to the people. But we know that in the Bible, not every time we listen to the people, that's the truth, right? A lot, there would be a couple of times that Jesus would have to ignore the people, ignore the crowd, it says. And there was another time where Pilate, the leader, listened to the crowd. And what happened? He listened to the crowd, and by so doing, he crucified Christ. And how many times as leaders have we listened to the crowd and posted something on social media because we were led by the crowd, but in reality, we're crucifying Jesus Christ publicly. I hope we don't get to that. I hope our guidelines will help our leaders not to get to that point. Speaking of um, listening to the crowd, I guess there is a public clamor for the church or at least for victory to say something about certain issues that come out. Um, why isn't victory siding with this? How come we're not saying anything about this certain um, bill or this certain law that wants to be passed? Um, could you maybe talk about that? Um, especially when the question comes, what are we doing as a church and why aren't we saying something or making public statements about certain issues? That's a great question. And and I understand that clamor, if you may, I understand that question. It's not something that we're trying to brush aside. It's something that we've conversed countless hours of conversations among pastors, bishops, councils, uh, senior pastors and leaders uh, because we're not, we're not afraid to make statements that would speak against evil and injustice. I just want to make that clear. If we do need, we will speak um, publicly against that. Mm -hmm. We're not too careful because we're, this is not about, and I've heard this, <laughs> it's not about us protecting our brand as victory. There's mm -hmm. no brand. Mm -hmm. We are, as pastors and spiritual leaders, we understand the nature of the church, the purpose of the church, and the posture of the church, which we will discuss lengthily in, uh, in a special episode about politics and elections uh, that we will also put here uh, where you'll find it. But because we understand the nature of the church, then that's the reason why sometimes we do things or we don't do things. 
Uh, but uh, as as you've said a while ago, I've mentioned in the podcast uh, previous to this that if what we're going to do or say in public would polarize people more, would divide Christians more, then we wanted to think of other ways where we can do the same thing, speak truth into power, if you may, as a prophetic voice. Uh, the church is a prophetic voice. Uh, or bring up our concerns to politicians in a more effective manner, then we'll do it. Uh, for example, uh, I'm not sure if, uh, if, I've, if that was captured in our episode about the anti-terror bill. It was a very controversial bill. Uh, Bishop Manny and I, we have some concerns about the bill which we read in social media. Yung mga objections na social media and we said, oh yeah, parang concerning to. So we went to have a private dialogue with the author of the bill, the Senate President, and together with some of the other pastors of the Body of Christ, we arranged it. And we said, here are our concerns. And he graciously gave us the bill. And we read it. <laughs> and we wow. studied it. The, I mentioned this in the episode, right? Yung uh, facts ba to or feelings? <laughs> <laughs> and I realized I was driven by my feelings <laughs> because of what I read in social media. Mm. When I read the facts, and dami na palang provisions doon uh, to protect human rights. And dami na nilang ginawa doon uh, to address some of the concerns that were being brought up. And we brought up certain more concerns. And he said, we will address that. We will revise this. We will. The Senate President was gracious enough to listen to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that was more effective. Mm-hmm. Instead of putting it on social media where he probably would not read it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or yeah. if he reads it and he finds it... Uh, uh, accusatory or he finds right. it uh, disrespectful, he will just brush it aside. Right. But now we were able to do something specific about the terror bill, something more useful. So that's what I say when, think about it. Is everything on social media or there might be something more you can do that would lessen the polarization division that social media has caused? Wow. wow. That's, <laughs> that's powerful. That's, I think it's a good thing to know because I don't think a lot of people know this. Yeah, yeah. I've, <laughs> I have a few questions like, why didn't we make this public? That we we had that conversation with the politicians. But at the same time, uh, another realization there for me is we have given them the benefit of the doubt by having that conversation even with the, with the politicians yeah. making those bills. And when you say, why did we not make it public? That's an ongoing conversation <laughs> again with us. Uh, we, we're not we're not media or communications experts as pastors. Our role is to do this as pastors. So if it would be right. helpful to put out in public, I'm not opposed to it. Uh, we're talking. Is it gonna be helpful for our members to put it in public or for our leaders? Then if it's helpful, we will do it. It's not something that we're trying to keep. It's just that we're not thinking that way because we're pastors. Um, I, I mean, we have. Politicians that were discipling, lawmakers, executive government officials, were in private, we would speak and we would say, do you believe in this bill? This bill is problematic when it comes to the public. And they listen and they said, Pastor, I assure you, we're not going to pass that bill. We're gonna mm-hmm. <laughs> We've are gonna." we had those conversations. And it's in discipleship conversations right. uh, that that's happening. Mm-hmm. And again, going back to what we say in our church over and over, we're here to honor God and make disciples. Because if we want a long-lasting change for our nation, mm. posting on social media uh, versus making disciples, I know it's not mutually exclusive. Mm. I know you can both post yeah. on social media and make disciples. But if it comes to the priority, then I would always say, uh, let's make disciples. Great. Yeah, I, again, I think that's the easier thing to do, to just post something on social media and just react, uh, not try to <laughs> start a conversation about it or not even try to hear the, the other side of the story. 
Yeah. But then again, it's also not necessarily a bad thing because it does reach, it does, especially if you have influence, it does reach people that you're, um, that you have influence over. But I think the key here is the wisdom to know um, when it's not just social media, but to be able to use all means necessary to even make disciples or i think back to pastor gilbert's point about hearing from the spirit that yeah. is this a social media post for this issue is it a right. discipleship conversation is it a private conversation or do we bring it to the public um i think very crucial but you listening to the holy spirit yeah and as, and as you've said uh I I want to repeat it again. Bakalang <laughs> <laughs> misinterpret ako. It's not mutually exclusive. I'm not saying right. either or. Uh, but if it comes to either or, I would prioritize this. But it should always be both. Tama ka, L. But the thing is, again, we're not communication experts. We're not social media experts. So we're studying it. We're trying to get wisdom on it. I mean, if we can use our influence, because that's what... Many, uh, some people would say, Victor, you're so influential. You're not using your influence to do that. We're using it in other ways, maybe not maximizing social media yet mm. because we're not experts. I mean, we're experts. I mean, we're learning. We're trying to learn. This is one of the reasons why we're doing this. We're trying to leverage social media and, like you said, any kind of channel. We're trying to leverage it to make disciples, to disciple the nation, to put God's word in there, and to make sure Jesus rules and reigns in our nation. Uh, if we're not there yet, I hope, again, let's like what you say, make allowances for us because uh, nobody's perfect. Hmm. So are you saying, Pastor Gilbert, that at some point there is a possibility for us to use our online platforms to speak into these matters? Oh, yes, definitely. That's been a conversation uh, with the Bishop's Council and some of our key uh, leaders um, that maybe sometimes we really need to have a public statement on our church platform on specific issues. Mm -hmm. right. But we don't want to rush there because right. I know it's complex, as I've said. Personal space, public arena, mm -hmm. public space. I mean, uh, I've, I've learned this in seminary when we were... Uh, in the seminary, John Wesley would always say, uh, we live in a world with complicated wickedness. Wow. That is so rich because there's no one simple answer and there's no one simple solution and one person knows the magic formula to address the societal dysfunctions. So we're trying to do our part. Mm. <laughs> I hope our pastors, our staff, our younger leaders, I hope they see we're trying our best to do our part. We're not the whole church. Mm -hmm. We're part of the body of Christ. There are so many more members of the body of Christ that are doing some things we're not doing. And we're doing some things they're not doing. Right. So when you look at victory, you should not just see us, what is victory doing? What is the whole body of Christ is doing? Mm -hmm. right. Because if the if victory is not doing it, there is a certain part of the body of Christ that's doing it. So we're doing it holistically as members of the body of Christ, trying to do our part in bringing the kingdom of God to our nation and to this world. Wow. I think you did mention it in the previous episode, Pastor Gilbert. When we just in the case that we rush into things and react into some of these things that are happening around us, it does limit our um, I guess opportunities to reach out to the people who are involved yeah. in that situation. Yeah, uh, it might uh, limit our effectiveness in trying to make disciples of all peoples. As we've said, the gospel is for everyone, mm -hmm. even for the vilest person, most sinful person. Jesus died for him. Jesus died for them. Even the most sinful sinner is valuable to Jesus. He died for them. And we don't want anything to hinder us from bringing the gospel to that person. So, yes, we will address the evil actions. We will address the injustice and whatever. But 
if we don't vilify the person, we still hope to bring the gospel to that person so that that person would be brought to repentance. So that's why we're not <laughs> rushing into social media, which is not our expertise. Mm-hmm. And is there a limit to that, Pastor Gilbert? When do we say that's that's the lid? We, we are going to say something about it. Yes. Uh, as I've said uh, on this podcast, we will speak against evil. We will speak against injustice. But we will not vilify the person, mm-hmm. right? We'll talk about that in detail in another <laughs> podcast, specifically for politics, where protest is a legitimate way of the church expressing its prophetic voice to those in power. Great. That's going to be an exciting podcast exciting. For, for everyone who's listening. That's going to be a discussion with our church leaders, and they're going to be talking about the challenges that are happening right now. Sometimes we're looking for a simple answer yeah. to the problems that we see or the injustices that we see, and it's, it's kind of like, okay, are you are you for it or are you against it? Mm-hmm. But like, wh- I like what you said, na oh, it's so complex, nga pala. Yeah. There's so many sides to it. Yeah. Even poverty. I mean, poverty is poverty is the biggest societal issue that we have, but that poverty affects the politics. <laughs> Uh, that poverty affects everything. But poverty was caused by a lot of things. Too. So it's cyclical. It's systemic. Yeah. It's it's so complex. Uh, again, when I took that course, that was the time I, my eyes were opened a whole lot more to the complexities of sin and the complexities of the effects of sin in the societal ills that we have in our world and in our nation. And and again, there's no one church that has the answer yeah. to all the ills. That's why it's called body of Christ. Yeah. There's uh, maybe we're maybe we're the eyes <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we're the big toe. <laughs> and we're trying to be the best big toe <laughs> that God has called us to be. There is a big body of Christ out there that's addressing different societal ills of society. And, and I'm, I'm just glad. That, that's liberating. I hope that's liberating for us. If you're a pastor listening to this, if you're a church leader listening to this, and people are asking you, what's your church doing? I hope it's liberating to say we're doing our part. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of churches out there doing theirs. If you take it collectively, I think as a body of Christ, we're doing a lot. Yeah. You mentioned in that uh, the episode earlier about the idea of us being private citizens and social media being a public arena. So, I could you dive deeper into that about like personal space, leadership space? How do we go about this new arena of social media and our, even our opinions and the church's opinions? Something. Yeah, like that. that that is actually a oh. A long process of conversation because it's it's something new during the time of your dad <laughs> and my time we did not have this uh, very public arena called social media so it it's a different time as you've said and we didn't want to come across as policing everybody because we don't want that we believe in our theology in the priesthood of all believers which means that everybody can hear from God and everybody should be led by the Spirit of God. So we didn't want to dictate how people hear from God and we didn't want to dictate how people follow the Spirit of God. But at the same time, (laughs) uh, we are leaders and this is what Leading Together is all about. We want to help lead people uh, continue to follow God as we've said, fish for men and fellowship with other believers. So it was that long conversation, and what was helpful to me was when we uh, when we had a subject in uh, in Asbury when we were t- taking up our masters in intercultural studies. Uh, our professor was talking about holistic ministry, and he talked about public space and private space, and and that was helpful in our conversations. Uh, we've said that our social media platform 
can be used for personal stuff. And we've used that. You've used that, L. You posted mm. Nara. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've used that, uh, Ryan. I mean, I, I post... I post about my Lakers, <laughs> <laughs> how miserable I am <laughs> every time we lose. I'm miserable now because Lakers are losing. Uh, I, I post about some personal stuff there. And yet I need to also be aware that when I put my personal life in a very public arena like that, then uh, there are two worlds that are colliding together. So it doesn't become a personal space only mm, right. in the same way that it's not everything is about public uh, uh, things. So that's where guidelines are very, very helpful so that we can still distinguish <laughs> what's right or wrong with those two, uh, two things coming together, personal space and public arena. And as I've said in that... Uh, theology together that we did when we st our personal views and personal space in the public arena of social media and when we make comments on a very public space like politics then you add in another dimension of complexity and so it is so complex and that's the reason why we came up with those guidelines to help our people because we're leaders for those of you who are listening, we can actually make that available as well in the show notes, the guidelines for everyone. As Pastor Gilbert mentioned, it's not just applicable for pastors and staff, but even for our leaders. And if you go to Victory, it's also applicable. I'm curious, Pastor Gilbert, with guidelines, are there, what do you call this, consequences if we decide not to go with the mm. guidelines? That's a great question. I, In a total different uh conversation on a different topic I had with the senior pastor. Uh, I was telling them, uh, th because <laughs> he was telling me, uh, but Pastor Gilbert, this is not a policy. But I said, it is a policy because when, when you start putting consequence in an action, then it's a policy. Mm. When there's no consequence, then it's guideline. So, mm -hmm. because these are social media guidelines, then there's no consequence. Uh, if you throw away the guideline, <laughs> if you don't do what the guideline says, if then there's no consequence. But again, we're pleading uh, with everybody because we've prayed about this and we've thought about this and we've had countless hours of conversations about this uh, to somehow listen to these guidelines because it will be helpful to them. We want to help them become more effective in what God has called them to do. We said that this guideline applies for everyone. So as a leader, let's just say I'm very involved in politics. I love my nation. Um, I, I like speaking up about certain things that I see in the, in the political arena. Um, how do I go about that? If I like posting on my opinions, I like posting about what I believe, this certain candidate or this certain politician, how would I go about having this guideline and then this personal opinion that I have that I want to release in this space? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think a lot of it is uh, personality. A lot of it is generational. <laughs> <laughs> in our generation, I'm, I'm now confessing my generation. <laughs> in my generation, we're not so much into that, but I've got kids. I've got teenagers. I've, right. I minister to is I still campus students. And and I do understand that. Uh, and that's the reason why these are called guidelines because it's not stopping them from doing that. Hopefully, the guidelines would give them more wisdom. Hopefully, the guidelines would give them more discernment to know what God really wants them to do. But we're not stopping anyone from doing that. Again, uh, as I've said in uh, that episode, guidelines are not supposed to restrict. Guidelines are supposed to help. And that's the tone and that's the heart of these guidelines, not to restrict anyone, not to police anyone, not to stop anyone, but to help everyone. So why do we, why do we have a no endorsement policy? Some people feel like we have to or are asking us, what about you? Who are you endorsing? Why are we not endorsing anyone? The main principle for not endorsing anyone is, again, 
the unity of the body of Christ. That's the first. We know that we don't want to restrict everybody from supporting a candidate. Mm-hmm. And we're asking them to be led by the Spirit. If there are people in our church who feel led by the Spirit to support some candidate, and then we just endorse one, mm-hmm. that's alienating. So that already uh, causes us to not make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit. So we're breaking that uh, scriptural advice from the Apostle Paul. So that's a main thing. If you're a pastor, make every effort to keep the unity by endorsing just one. And then our church members, church leaders felt led to support another, then that would certainly cause division. Mm -hmm. Another one is what you asked a while ago. It might cause us to lose our effectiveness in bringing the gospel to the other candidates and preaching the gospel, making disciples. If we endorse one particular candidate, that would cause an offense in other candidates and their parties and their relatives and their friends. And their and if you do that, then you've just lost a whole lot of people and close them to the gospel, close them to you because you have shown preference to one candidate over them. Yeah. But wouldn't that make people feel like we're more concerned about our agenda more than nation building as a whole? Yes, because our agenda is God's agenda. The nat- the very nature of the church is to be on a mission with God. Hmm. If you look at the Bible, Christians and again, I'll talk we'll talk more about this in that podcast that we've been saying here. Christians are called to follow Jesus and Christians are called to make disciples. Nation building becomes a an effect of disciples. If there's a lot of disciples, the nation would be built up. We've seen that in America. The foundation, a lot of disciples. But they did not set out to nation build. <laughs> They lived out their lives as disciples of Christ, and the nation was built. Jesus has never said, do nation building. He said, go make disciples. Preach the gospel to all nations. So if we're going to be accused, (laughs) and we're concerned about our agenda, which is God's agenda, then I'd rather be accused of that. Mm -hmm. Jesus was accused of that. (laughs) And he took his stand and say, it's about the father's business it's about the father's timing as long as we as leaders of victory as we as church would always say this about the father his kingdom his timing his business then we would take that it's a lot to unpack there so i'm excited for that the (laughs) next (laughs) there is a lot to unpack (laughs) and i know we can't really talk about everything here in this episode because our time is limited and I think it's better for people to start thinking about that and interact a little bit. Yeah. Good conversation starter. So these are guidelines, Pastor Gilbert. This is a lot of people that I know and uh, <laughs> trying to exclude myself. <laughs> I, I'm not really <laughs> that much into posting about politics online, but... But this do is, you know someone well, who's well, always... A trying. lot of people... <laughs> I will not name <laughs> names who are very close to me, but <laughs> a lot of people that are like, and I'm sure you see this online, the people that you know really do post about their candidates online. Yeah, someone in my family is doing that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and we're saying these are guidelines. We are still, we are still allowed to do that, even as staff, as leaders. Yeah. We're not saying don't do it. Yeah, as I've said, uh, even in my family, I use the same guideline to give uh, <laughs> wisdom to that family member, but I have not stopped my family member from doing that. Okay, I need tips on how to uh, put some guidelines into... To your family member? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because Kevin, you know. Because <laughs> your baby girl yeah. is... <laughs> Your baby girl is too young. Has a Facebook account. <laughs> <laughs> she needs wisdom. <laughs> this, I hope, is helpful to Nara. 
Yeah. <laughs> so we do have guidelines at home. So guys, please, ano, please follow. <laughs> but uh, kidding aside, these actually cause people to become divisive online. Uh, how do we respond to that? Like, for example, this I share about this candidate, then someone starts bombarding me with with messages against this candidate. How do I respond to that as a leader? That's, That's, your on fault. You. Yeah. <laughs> That's your fault. That's on you. We gave you guidelines. <laughs> we gave you guidelines, exercise wisdom. <laughs> That's what I've said. <laughs> A policy you suffer consequence for in your job you suffer consequence for not following the guidelines. <laughs> so it's better not to post at all. Dinaman. <laughs> <laughs> but you know there. Uh, but uh, seriously speaking, there are some people who can take it. There are some people who can argue, debate online, and if they're comfortable doing that, as long as I hope, and and again, I hope. I hope we don't lose our witness for Christ in doing so. Right. Yeah. I hope we don't lose the fruit of the Spirit in doing so. Mm. I hope we don't lose our Christ-likeness in doing so. Again, there are people who can do that, where they can argue online and still be loving and kind and patient. Then go ahead. <laughs> I'm not sure how I can do that. <laughs> so if I can't do that, which I'm saying now, I can't do that all the time. I will, it will be wiser for me not to do it. And it really just goes back to being discerning. When, when you do post online, it's becoming more discerning when you respond to things that are happening around you. And this is going to be very exciting because we're working on, on our upcoming series on Daniel. Yeah, sermon series. Yes. Sermon series on Daniel. And that's going to talk about that a lot be more discerning especially that's gonna come in when we go into the transition of leadership in our country Ooh. so yeah that's that, very exciting that's kind of connected right the the preaching series so we're, we're trying when we talk about leading together uh we try to lead together through small groups through preaching through podcasts like this through conversations so there are many ways that we do leading together and uh, preaching uh, is one of those. So that's something to look forward to to everyone who's listening. Yeah, this has been rich. This conversation has been rich. I I enjoyed it uh, as always with uh, you, Ryan, <laughs> and with you, L. Uh, I'm I'm also learning a lot. I mean, that that's the whole point of this leading together. When we lead together, we're journeying to become better leaders together as well. So in in spite of the fact that I'm I'm leading a huge organization, Victory in Every Nation Philippines, I am the first to say that I'm growing and learning as a leader together with you guys. Thank you, Pastor Gilbert. Thank and you. You've learned so much yes, as well. Yes, for me, it's uh, there's so much impartation here and yeah. um, a lot of discipleship moments even. Yeah. And thank you say. for even answering the hard questions yeah. <laughs> that they're throwing at you. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, this is a great opportunity for us to ask those questions yeah. also. Yeah, and those questions, uh, again, just to say, we're wrestling with those questions, uh, countless hours of conversations among the leaders in, in trying to, uh, to get the mind of Christ in answering those questions. And I'm sure there's a lot more questions from our listeners and hope you stick around and listen to our future podcasts. I think this was a very rich uh, conversation. We discussed so much, actually. You can pick up so much from that. But this is just one of the many conversations that we can have. And we hope that it helps you start more conversations with others. If there is something that we can pick up from this, hopefully it's that we're empowered to make decisions and that we need to listen to the Holy Spirit and to discern um, what He is saying and to lean in on the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And we want to invite everyone to just continue to, uh, to watch out for that special podcast that will be coming out where we're going to talk and dive deeper into um, some of these principles that Pastor Gilbert mentioned. And we also have an upcoming series on Daniel about discernment. <laughs> I think it's good to, um, to really watch out for that. It's coming out in May. Yeah. And we also have resources on this topic. If you haven't yet 
download the Victory Groups app. They're available there, Kingdom and Discipleship, God and Government, for you to be able to continue the conversations within your Victory Groups, uh, with your leaders, so you can continue to talk about this topic. Those materials would help us understand more the Kingdom of God, uh, because that's really the the meta narrative of scripture if you look at it from genesis to revelation it's all really about the kingdom of god that's the message of jesus and those will help us understand the nature of the church and the relationship of the church and the purpose of the church when it comes to the kingdom of god so exciting i mean if i were a victory group leader these are yeah. exciting materials that would help uh, in discipleship conversations uh, just like yeah. what we're doing now this is like discipleship conversations but if you have those materials that would really help you Yeah, and they're out now they're already available so download the app it's already there thank you Pastor Gilbert thanks Ryan we hope that you continue to join us as we have more conversations discipleship conversations and we'll see you again in our next episodes of Leading Together thank you everybody <laughs> <laughs>